Hello and welcome to another episode of EAO's Just Ask, your monthly appointment with a leading expert in implant dentistry. My name is Garrett Heikop and I'm the host of this EEO channel and in this live video session we're going to try to answer all your questions about how to assess the aesthetic results in the anterior maxilla. I'm very honored and glad to be joined by this month's expert joining us live from Ostia, Rudolf Fuhrhauser. Rudolf, good evening. Good evening, it's a pleasure nice to be here. <laughs> yes, nice to see you. Thank, thank you for making up uh, your time, making your time available for our audience. Now, for those people who don't know you, it's very important you said that I state at the beginning, you are a pure prosthodontist. That man, means you've never done a surgery, you've never placed an implant, you just focused on the restorations. Yeah. Uh, but, and that's why we have you on, I just ask here tonight, you are, I love the term, the scientific inventor. You coined the term of the pink aesthetic score, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. You uh, did that working in the Department of Removable and Fixed Prosthetics at the University of Vienna, and you're also a partner at your own private practice. So welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the nice introduction. It's a exactly. pleasure to be here with my favorite topic. And exactly. uh, yeah. Yes, and we are live. And like always at EAO, just ask live. I always invite our audience to kind of get the party started by checking in, letting us know that you're here, letting us know who you are, where you're joining us from. And we have a warm room with us already. We just uh, see Berus Arafenia joining it and checking in. Dr. Daniel Vetsch from uh, Budapest. We have uh, Areshni Mohammed, Victor Pallari from Moldova joining. Isabella joining us. Uh, Rukieta joining us from Milan. Katarina Zwicknik from Graz. Amit Tariq from Morocco and also Afonso Gil is uh, joining us live from Zurich. So here's proof we're live and it works. So um, let us know any questions you might have and be aware if you've been part of an EEO just asked before, there used to be 90 minutes. Tonight we're cutting that time in half, only 45 minutes. So you better make sure you submit your questions quickly because otherwise it's already over. And if you don't ask, you never know. Finally, Rudolf, before we start talking about the pink aesthetic score, I want to point out to our audience that next month we don't have an EEO Just Ask Live because October is the month of the EAO Digital Days. If you haven't done so, please check out the website digitaldays.eao.org where you find out that registration is open. You can now register for free and get access to the digital platform for a full month between October 8th and November 8th. And you should mark your diary, uh, put a big cross in your agenda for the evenings between October 12th and 14th, where you, where you have an exciting live program with you. Very interactive, very entertaining, and very educational. So hope to see everyone back next month as well. All right, Rudolf, that's it for the uh, opening proceedings. Let's get started talking about the pink aesthetic score. Before we start uh, answering live questions from our audience, maybe it's good to give us a little bit of introduction of what the pink aesthetic score is and what we're talking about tonight. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. And we'd like to present you the, the beginning of that scoring system. So uh, going back to the 80s, to the end of the 80s, and uh, we go to the slides, uh, and uh, we see at that time that was a success. We had a stable implant, and uh, it was for the first time to, to treat implants uh, uh, in single tooth gaps. But uh, finally, it was not really uh, nice, and we focused at that time at, at the papillas, and even that was the main aspect. And that led to some, some uh, special surgery treatments, and this is one of 1993 Vienna, Austria, uh, when even there was cuts in the interior zone of the soft tissue, and uh, so there was a papilla-preserving technique, but this was a horrible result finally, because we had really, really much problems with uh, recession. We had problems with uh, discoloration and with uh, different textures. So we, we said, okay, there, there should be some scoring system which uh, allows to assess the outcome uh, with the beginning of the 2000s, uh, it was uh, the, this aim to have something. And, and, and unfortunately, 
Pink Aesthetics Core is, is something which can be used in daily practice and maybe therefore uh, it has uh, some, some success in, in, in using uh, or getting used by people all over the world. So we said, okay, let's go for seven variables, uh, looking uh, to the mesial or distal papilla, to the level of the soft tissue margin, to the contour, to the process, to the color, and to the texture. So going uh, first, uh, the uh, mesial papilla, which is in the central, has no corresponding tooth. Uh, this is a special thing. If you go to the lateral incisor, you have even a corresponding mesial papilla, and the scoring system is relative easy. You have two points if there is a perfect result or a complete papilla, it's one point. If it's incomplete and if there's no papilla, it's zero points. And it's the same with the distal papilla. And always it's the shape versus the reference tooth. You, uh, I will present you uh, afterwards some uh, 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 results. Uh, and you should always uh, keep in mind that we have not to be better than nature. And uh, finally, again, it's complete or incomplete or absent. Very interesting is that level of soft tissue margin because recession always is one of the, uh, the major topics how to avoid recessions. And so we have even the level of soft tissue versus the reference tools which means we have no discrepancy, but within one millimeter, because nature not always is symmetric. So uh, we have not to be too accurate with that. So it's within one millimeter. If it's more than one millimeter between one and two, it's only one point and it's zero point. If we have more than two millimeters having a severe recession or a severe apical displacement. The fourth is soft tissue uh, contour, meaning it should be the same contour than the contralateral tooth, even with two points if it's natural, one point fairly natural, and zero point unnatural. And uh, of course, there is a kind of subjective uh, evaluation, and uh, this is uh, even in the alveolar process, which is view, viewed uh, from the frontal aspect, which is not so easy in some cases. Um, so it's, it's alveolar process deficiency, even matching uh, the corresponding tooth. Uh, if we have no uh, uh, deficiencies, we have two points, one point. If there is a slight deficiency and zero point, it's an obvious uh, uh, discrepancy. And uh, then is uh, soft tissue color even no difference, moderate difference or obvious difference, and even that texture uh, meaning difference versus the reference tooth. And uh, finally, even it's not so easy even to score all of these variables, but we have shown that it's reproducible even in other studies. Uh, and even uh, I cannot say that I, I'm judging absolutely the same score uh, today and maybe in one month. So that there is a maybe a little discrepancy, but finally it's reproducible. So you have a maximum score, 14 points, and that are the seven variables. Exactly. Well, that looks very clear, very structured and, and relatively easy to judge. Eh? It's either uh, zero, one or two. But I guess uh, the proof is uh, proof of the pudding is in the eating. Let, can, can we practice? Can, can we actually apply this to a specific example? Yeah, so I can I can show one example. Uh, look for that. Uh, so if we go to a, a, a case we have done with an immediate implantation, so we are fans of immediate uh, uh, implant placement and immediate restoration, which should be done very, very accurately. And we have even to assess this uh, tooth to be extracted before, because we can even use, so this tooth, because of root canal treatment of apical uh, deficiency and apical process uh, uh, from the endodontic view, uh, this tooth will be extracted. So this is now something we have to talk with the patient. How does it look? So if we go to the mesial papilla, we have the feeling, yes, that's fully developed. That's really, really nice. If we go to the lateral papilla, we see, okay, that there is a little bit a deficiency. So we have, even if we go for immediate restoration to say to the patient, do you agree with that uh, 
aspect, do you uh, agree with that aesthetics of the tooth? Uh, because this distal papilla will not be there after reconstruction. And sometimes we, and even maybe the patient, is uh, more aware of uh, losing or have a deficiency at the papilla than before. So you have to uh, assess that with the patient and go through and say, there is only level one and it will not be more, but it will stay if we do no incisions there. So if we go to the level, this is a perfect situation. If we go to contour, it's really perfect situation, perfect uh, initial situation. Alveolar process is very nicely developed. Uh, we have a nice color, a, a de deficiency in color, so which is very often uh, something which is a topic for the patient because these uh, roots are discolorated and shining through the gingiva. And we, if we uh, look at our data and other data, we can promise the patient 95% that we will lighten up that area with uh, a full ceramic abutment. And uh, finally, we have a texture which is uh, without any problem. So we have two points. So we are starting at 12 points and we can even uh, talk with the patient and say, okay, we can even stay with that. And we will as, uh, uh, expect not 100%, but with a very high percentage that we will change the color after treatment. Mm -hmm. Let me maybe, yeah. So, so Rudolf, help me understand where in your protocol do you then use this? Uh, you already sketched us. This is so. This is an assessment before treatment, yeah. right? So, yeah. so you score the situation as is, and then you place an implant or an implant is placed, and you do a, a post. Or can you, can you tell us a little bit of how and where you use the assessment? So we use the assessments at any beginning of the treatment. So we can even say, where is the starting point? And Pink Aesthetics Core is uh, very conscious, not uh, uh, in combination with the white aesthetic because the crown will change from the beginning and uh, with the provisional crown and the final crown, but we can assess soft tissue after the operation, after four months, after six months with full healing of soft tissue, and after one year or after five years, we have even shown the results uh, in a publication. So you can make a long-term evaluation of what is happening with the soft tissue. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. so, Interesting. This, is, this looks quite straightforward, the example that you've shown us, a, a very high score, 12 out of 14. Um, looks pretty straightforward are there things that someone could go do wrong how can you how can you do is, is there anything we should be cautious of yes i i want to 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 show uh that you can even use pink status a little bit wrong so i have found that publication in literature uh where i was a little bit unhappy to see that uh the the uh, outcome was judged worse than it is because if we go to the initial situation, of, of course, it's a, it's a period case. Of course, we have a missing papilla at the beginning. Uh, and even if you say the mesial papilla is absent, which uh, can even not be expected uh, with that diastema. So it's, it's I, I counted that with zero, and even the colleagues are counting that with zero. But if we look to the lateral papilla, we see that there is a deficiency on the contralateral side, but it's the same level than before. So we cannot expect to be better that. So it's two points for me, and even soft tissue level is two points, contour is two points, process is two points, even color and texture. So we are starting with 12 and hopefully not losing something uh, from that starting point 12. So if we go now uh, to the uh, evaluation afterwards, we have lost something. We have even the mesial papilla with zero, the distal papilla shrinked a little bit. So we are going down from two initial situation to one, the level shrinked. So we had a uh, uh, soft tissue level one and the contour is a little bit different. So it's only one point. Alveolar press process is still here and color discolorated a little bit, maybe to a titanium abutment due to the, the titanium abutment. And the texture is two because there were no incisions. So we leveled down from 12 
to eight. And uh, if we see what a colleague uh, are, are judging, they said it's zero uh, at the distal papilla, which is not really right because the initial situation, if you look to the counterlateral tools, it's only a little bit of shrinkage. So it, it, it's absolutely level one. And if we compare our uh, evaluation on the right side, it's eight point uh, versus the uh, outcome which was published, uh, it's only zero point at the distal papilla and at the level. So uh, we have to be fair uh, to our outcomes because we have not, uh, nature is the starting point and we have not to be uh, much better than nature and it's okay even if we lose a little bit and it's only level one and not level zero. So that's that's a kind of, of um, emphasizing not to be too critical with our outcomes because we have always to measure versus the natural tools. This is a little bit the limitation of the pink aesthetic score because it's only usable for single tools implants, we have to say, and we have to, we need uh, contralateral uh, natural tools to compare. Exactly. Because if, if, if in more complex case or multi-implant or multi-prosthetic uh, uh, cases, th there's not enough to compare, what goes wrong? We are, you, you can't fill all the scores. Uh, again? Again? Excuse me. So you're saying it's just for a single implant, but I just want to really make sure we understand why that is. Because we need a, a corresponding tooth, because we need uh, something to compare. If we have maybe two uh, lateral incisors restored, we can even compare that to the other side. It's okay, but initially it's, it's, it's even done for, uh, uh, for a single tooth uh, comparing to a natural tooth. And we even, I have to say, we failed to do uh, an, a, another score for multiple implants. So we are working on that and we have some ideas but it didn't uh, really become as uh, yeah, comprehensive as the pink aesthetic score. Exactly, a very simple and a very strong tool. Well, thanks for the initial introduction. I, I have a ton of questions myself, but I also see that our live audience is submitting a, a first question to us. So if you're just joining us, we're talking to Rudolf Fuhrhauser about how to assess the, out, the aesthetic outcomes of the anterior maxilla and specifically about the pink aesthetic uh, score, a very useful tool to do that. He has just explained how to uh, use it. And Victor Pallari joining us from Moldova is actually writing uh, the following to you. Rudolf. He says, what is the influence of implant placement and prosthetic rehabilitation timing procedures on the aesthetic outcomes of the anterior maxilla? So I think he already wants to use this pink aesthetic score as a kind of an overarching thing to see what happens to specific cases. Do you have any, have you done any research in that area? Yes, absolutely. So our treatment protocols let me say, I let finally based on that uh, on that data because we try to be as good as nature is. So we we go uh, even very often into immediate placement. So uh, what is really, 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 and maybe we can go to uh, 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 one of our one of our uh, uh, cases. So uh, we can go to that. Uh, area because we try to restore the alveola and even that uh, pink aesthetic surrounding of the tooth as accurate as we can. So we do that today with a copy abutment. So we copy even, uh, no, it's not, uh, uh, we go for yeah. uh, restoration. And this is a case where we have to extract uh, this uh, incisor due to an apical process here. And uh, even that's uh, a very nice initial situation. It's a pretty young lady. So we have even very ideal uh, starting points. And uh, if we go th through, we see that color is a little bit discolorating by the, uh, by the road and even the texture is a little bit different. So we are starting at 12 and we are going then to a scan of the patient. And finally, we, we 
place our implant palatally, uh, he be having distance to the buccal plate, and then uh, we scan the patient after the operation, and then we do an overlay. So that is called copy abutment protocol. And this is the answer for the question of the colleague. So be as accurate as possible to restore this immediate uh, uh, abutment, which is now done in a, a one abutment one time protocol, which is has the same size, the same form than the initial uh, tooth we have to extract it. So uh, to be uh, very uh, simple, same form, same aesthetics. So we go to the uh, insertion of that abutment and we can even uh, restore that without pressing, only stabilizing the soft tissue and finally go with a provisional restoration and finally go to a, a definitive restoration, which stabilizes soft tissue as it was, improving the color. So finally, we ended up with a pink histotic score of 13 or 14, which is very nice even to see. So uh, for me, the outcome of pink aesthetic score looking very accurately means we have to do uh, the, the restoration, the immediate restoration with a one abutment, one time concept, very, very properly, not to press and not to be under contour, to be contoured very precisely to have nice results. And coming uh, to another, the, the second part of the question, implant position has a very, very, very great impact. We have even published that. If you are 0 0.8 millimeter, 0 0.8 millimeter buckle of an ideal position, you will end up with a recession and pink aesthetic score is going down. So uh, implant position has one of our major impacts in uh, aesthetics in the anterior zone. We have now collected uh, 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 73 uh, patients and we are going now to, to, to publish that. Uh, it's, it's, it's to be very, very accurate. We can go into that topic if we have time, I don't know. Uh, I have prepared something if we come to implant position because that's the absolute crucial point in having a good outcome. Exactly. We can come there in a minute. I just wanted to, to know one thing first is obviously the pink aesthetic score makes cases really well um, uh, scorable and thus comparable and followable over time. And to that aspect, I'm curious. Are you following up with these patients? Are you keeping track of the pink aesthetic score? And, and what do you see in that data? What happens over yeah. time with the yeah. score? Yeah, so I go on with the presentation. So we, maybe we can do that a little bit quicker uh, to go to our, to our results. We have uh, published over five years because we can see here uh, one a case which uh, was done 10 years ago. And it's very nice because it's a nurse of the academy. So I have her uh, in, in a very uh, 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 a good recall. And it's now 10 years ago. And we see a little bit of remodelation in that area. Uh, but we had no recession, which we don't have even in that immediate restorations using the copy abutment. It was a little bit different at that time. We have done it uh, uh, even with the plaster casts. Grinding today with a, a digital way, it's much more easier to do. And we saw, okay, what happened to 77 anterior single tooth implants within five years? And we saw the pink aesthetic score didn't get worse, so it got a little bit better. Because if we look, mesial papilla stays over that time. Distal papilla stays over that time. Uh, even the soft tissue level stayed, so we had nearly no recession in a great amount. And we had even a very stable contour, which is even given by the uh, copy abutment. But we had a, a, a kind of remodelation of uh, the alveolar process. That means that we are going down significantly over that time, but it, this doesn't bother on the, our patients. So we had no patient which uh, were coming to say, please do me some soft tissue augmentation. So it is decreasing. Uh, we have even measured that now uh, within one year, it's 0 0.5 millimeter of remodelation. 
but it's for the patient, no problem. But what is going better is even the color, which I said, uh, because we have a ceramic abutment and even the texture is healing over time. So that's are the, that are the results of our immediate restoration using the form of the extracted tooth long term. So that, exactly. that is one use, that is one use of the copy abutment to have long term evaluation. Exactly. Yeah. So, and and the pink pink aesthetic score allows you to track this uh, over time. Uh, in fact, now before uh, we we dive deeper, and let me remind our audience to submit their questions because you only have twenty minutes left, and then we uh, yeah. we cut off yeah. this uh, live already. Mm -hmm. Rudolf, um, I was going to say, I did some research before we started, and it seems that there is other pink aesthetic scores. You talk about seven variables and a, a maximum of 14 points. I've also read that there's a five variable. What is the difference between these pink aesthetic scores? Yes, uh, yeah, that's something which is a little bit uh, a topic which is uh, a, a little problem because it's it's disturbing uh, maybe the scientific um, um, uh, com uh, community. So even uh, Belzer, he published uh, uh, with the same name, uh, a pink aesthetic score, which has five variables and 10 points at the maximum, because they, they decided to say uh, peri-implant color, uh, texture, and the, the alveolar process of facial convexity and summarized it with one point. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there, there is existing one uh, special, special, uh, one special uh, form of that pink aesthetic score. Uh, this is combined with a white aesthetic score uh, with uh, five variables for the crown, which we doesn't do uh, because uh, we, we wanted to focus on, on soft tissue. But that's, that's a publication. And uh, even if you look to the cases of that publication, you see, uh, for instance, that uh, uh, not very good result uh, because we have a missing mesial papilla, which is one, and a distal papilla with one, and the curvature uh, as they uh, uh, score uh, even that uh, that uh, surrounding of the soft tissue with two. For me, that's only one because it's not symmetric to the other side, even due to the fact that this crown is a little bit wider than uh, the corresponding tooth. And uh, the level was one little bit of recession. Level is for me not really a, a great topic. Uh, and with the convexity of one, so it, it, there was six point. So for me, uh, it is uh, uh, even the uh, contour uh, not really nice established. And I would say that's only level one. But finally, if we go uh, to uh, this uh, uh, Babylonian confusion, that means, uh, and Chen and Busa have done uh, a, a, a systematic review, we have seen that in that, the, the, the publication uh, in that uh, paper, we had 15, uh, seven variable uh, evaluations. We had two uh, with seven and the, and the white aesthetic score and five using the modified pink aesthetic score. So uh, there is a kind of Babylonian confusion. We uh, have done uh, a master thesis uh, at the Vienna University uh, uh, with the modification of each of the variables. And we have seen that each of that seven variables has even the same importance. There's no great discrepancy. So finally, I would say use the seven items because if you go uh, to the uh, reproducibility of the score, you see that the Interrater agreement is better if you have seven variables than five, and even the general agreement uh, between multiple items, this interrelatedness is better and should be at least 0 0.7. So I think we lose a little bit if we go down, down to five, uh, pink aesthetic score five, and we lose a little bit of reliability and consistency. So uh, exactly. let, me, let me state that a little bit. It's an important message of our Just Ask Tonight. This is a very established scientific methodology. It's been tested and, and reproduced many times. So it's an important takeaway and don't get confused in the wording. We have another audience question. And uh, dear audience members, please uh, use the time of the fact that we are live. Isabella Rochetta is writing. Ah. Do you 
ever use the uh, pink aesthetic score in the lower anterior dentition as well in cases where the patient shows. Is it applicable? You already said limitation is to single implant, but can we actually also use it in the lower dentition? Absolutely, absolutely. You can use it for a lower incisor, for a single uh, lower incisor, as you use it in the upper. It's, it's no problem to do that, yeah? Because okay. you can even use all of that variables. Exactly. So that's a, that's a simple uh, uh, yes uh, there. Thank you, uh, Isabella, for the question. And uh, any any things we need to take into account when when we uh, when we use it in that area? Not really. Not really. Uh, I, I, I have even to say we we do that really seldom. But there is a publication from the University of Vienna, and they have done that in the lower uh, area, and they have even used the pink aesthetic score. Uh, and uh, finally, the outcome was it was more reliable, and uh, it was re reliable. And uh, yeah, finally, you can say you can use it in the lower jaw. But uh, normally, you're focusing at the upper jaw because there is the impact of aesthetics is so much, it's so great because you have different smile types. And if you have a young lady with a high smile, you cannot be uh, uh, yeah, as accurate as you can be. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we've learned that the, the, the pink aesthetic score is a very important tool in, in science and to, to create some, some to, to make many of these cases in the different cases uh, analytic, uh, uh, so we can analyze them, let me put it like that. What does it do to the uh, patient communication side of things? Do you, do you score together with the patient? Do you do it yourself? W where does it play a role in that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's creating the starting point. And maybe I go back to uh, the patient which I haven't chosen as, uh, as a kind of, of, of uh, uh, factor showing how to use it. And let's go now into the patient and to see how it ended. So we had even that uh, big aesthetic score 12. So you see the apical infection at that area. Uh, and uh, we had this uh, score of 12. And uh, how ended it? And we have even done the same protocol again, meaning scanning, scanning after the operation, after palatal placement of the implant, overlay design and designing the copy abutment and finally creating that abutment which is inserted three to four hours after the operation. Yeah, it, it's, it's inserted without any pressure. So it's only stabilizing soft tissue. It's not pressing soft tissue, which is very interesting even to see. And even to look now, if you insert that, not to press up, uh, the uh, E-point, as we say, so the level should be at the same size. So if you would press up, if you would press up that area, if you put press up here, you have to reduce, uh, so not to have buckled pressure. That's, that's, that's something you have to see, not to press the, uh, the uh, soft tissue anteriorly, meaning that anterior pressing means upward pressing so that we have to see so we have to end up at the same day at the same level so finally we have four months of healing we know that this distal papilla will stay will not grow maybe has a tendency to grow we have seen that in in literature but we cannot even promise for the patient and so we go from 12 to 13 because color has changed after going to a ceramic abutment. And finally, we are pre preparing that. It's the only form of implant restoration. We do cementing because we don't want to remove that one abutment one time. It's only in the anterior area. We do a, a, a very small and gentle grinding of that, make an, a scan again and make a final crown. And it's the only cemented crowns we do in the, in the posterior part only screwed crowns, but that abut we do, upper abutment we don't want to remove again. So and that's the overlay. And we see it's 0 0.47 of reduction, of horizontal reduction. That's the amount of remodeling of the soft tissue and the alveolar process, which is not very much and which is not uh, even seen by the patient. 
So that's that's finally uh, the end result. And uh, so we do that in that way. But that's not the topic today. Yeah. Exactly. I was thinking that's that's an interesting procedure. Thanks for sharing. And then obviously it has an impact on our uh, on our soft tissues. But let's move back to the pink aesthetic score. And I, I just uh, noticed I missed a question from uh, Eva Milinkovic. Eva, thank you very much for submitting. Obviously, this is a case where everything turned out very well and it went very smooth. But she's asking, do you have any data on the impact of soft tissue augmentation procedures around single implants using the pink aesthetic score? Yes, I have prepared one case. Uh, we go here. Uh, we have an, not published that because we are normally doing no soft tissue augment, augmentation in advance. We are doing soft tissue augmentation only if the patient uh, has uh, the demand for that. So we are evaluating the patient before, and if he agrees, we can go on with, for instance, immediate restoration. But this is a case where there is an aplasia in the region of the left uh, lateral incisor after orthodontic treatment, opening of the gap. We have enough bone, uh, but even missing soft tissue. We have done the implant and say, okay, how can we treat that uh, very properly? Uh, seeing that there is a real bone uh, deficiency. And we said to the patient, okay, let's look for the final result. It was the provisional crown and uh, even with that uh, screw access hole. And uh, the patient said, no, that's not enough for me. There is a missing papilla here. We have to add some soft tissue. And then we have done that using the provisional crown and finally, uh, the healing period. And finally, we had a growing. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it was better than before. And we leveled up from seven, which was uh, the resin bonded bridge at that time prior to the implantation. We went then to 13. And finally, four years after stable soft tissue, not perfect papilla building, but finally a little bit of growth of the papilla. So we have even the effect of soft tissue augmentation for that uh, patient, but we do that in very rare cases. So <laughs> it would not, would not be enough even to make a great publication about that topic because we do uh, soft tissue augmentation only if we have a deficiency and not as a prophylactic uh, therapy. That's, that's, a, that's a very a main part of our, of our, of our uh, treatment concept, uh, because uh, if we do delayed procedures, because if uh, the buccal plate is not intact, we have to extract, we have to do socket preservation, and then we go for uh, uh, um, uh, computer navigated placement. So uh, for the delayed procedure, we don't do any opening of soft tissue. We go for, uh, as I say, uh, aesthetic uh, 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 oriented uh, implantation, having a good position. And we end up in, I would say, 10 augmentations per year because if we have same level of soft tissue and the patient has not a high smile, he's in our Austrian population, not the demand for an augmentation. But okay. even you can use, to answer the question, uh, if you want to use it, you can use it even after the operation, after the augmentation procedure, uh, you can even uh, show the, the, the data. Uh, and even I have uh, one uh, uh, publication of Cosin, he has done, and this is even one of the, 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 the use of pink aesthetic score to see what is the outcome of different treatment modalities. He, he compared standard implant treatment, immediate implant treatment, guided bone regeneration and grafted bone. And he saw, yes, we have comparable outcomes. Uh, immediate implant treatment was the best result, not significantly, but it was the best result. And uh, 
So you can even compare all these treatment modalities, but we have to see here, there was a flap opening procedure and uh, we can see at the publication of Boardman that he says, okay, if we do immediate and if, if you do delayed, we have the same pink aesthetic score, but if we don't go to uh, open a flap, we level up from pink aesthetic score 11 to 13. So that's a typical use of pink aesthetic score to score different treatment modalities and to see oh, how is the outcome changed. And even you can do that if you do your soft tissue augmentation before and after. Yeah, I think this can be the really interesting part if, if somehow the pink aesthetic score would become some kind of standardized measuring procedure after each case, right? And then someone yeah. should collect all that data across Europe and the world and we could really dive into that. Now, when we come to the last five minutes of our live EO just asked tonight, uh, final question. This pink aesthetic score, you first published about it 16 years ago. Uh, about five years ago, you already s showed how it's reproducible and how it really works. What do you see when you look into the future? You already kind of hinted that you try to make a score with multiple implants failed so far. Uh -huh. What's the next step when we talk about assessing our aesthetic outcomes? Now the next step will be uh, to have multiple implants uh, even judged and uh, scored. Uh, that's, that's one of the thing uh, I think we have, have to have. We have to do that. And I, I, I give even this, this impact to the community watching us. Uh, every idea is welcomed to share and to go for that uh, and, and, and to be critical for the own, own cases and even for the, for the benefit of our patients. So we would need that we have even maybe to share ideas uh, to come to that, that multiple implants core Finally, uh, pink aesthetic score is working relatively nice and reproducible. So I think that that, that work maybe is done, <laughs> but uh, we'd have to look for multiple cases. Do you think at some point, if we talk a lot in this, uh, just ask about digital technologies, and then we look at intraoral scanners and, and artificial intelligence, do you think in the future we can just upload certain photos of our patients and the pink uh, aesthetic score will be calculated automatically by the uh, AI bots behind us? Absolutely. Maybe there is a kind of protocol uh, with an overlay of the contralateral tooth, and maybe you can get that with one click. So that's, exactly. that's, that, that's possible, that's possible. You can even uh, communicate that very quickly to the patient, yeah? Yeah. 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 So th that is uh, the future uh, work uh, to be done because I can imagine if once we can do that, we can just feed all these photos of all the cases across the world and really get an overarching uh, research database that we can now start to uh, compare and look at the different uh, yeah. treatment options and, and the effects over the long term. Yeah. Rudolf, thank you very much. If we come to our last minutes, what is the most important thing you want people to remember when they walk away from this EO? Just ask. Uh, the most important thing is uh, for me, keep it simple, keep therapy simple, keep therapy patient oriented. Uh, do not more than the patient want. So share decision with the patient. What do you want? What is your level of expectation? Uh, this is the first part. And the second part is be really accurate with two things. Be accurate with your provisional restorations. You can do really, really wrong thing. If the provisional, which is sometimes something which is a little bit neglected because it knew for some time, but the outcome is driven by that provisional restoration. So be accurate even in the provisionals and be accurate in implant position. That's the crucial exactly. fact. Okay. Well, thank you for I'm underlining that. that. And let me yeah, remind our audience <laughs> before, I, uh, before I give you my final thank yous that this is the EO Just Ask, which is here every first Monday of the month. So if you haven't done so, please make sure you subscribe to the EO channel. Hit that little bell so you'll be notified as soon as a new EO Just Ask is scheduled or a new video is uploaded. And if you know of someone who might find the pink aesthetic score interesting, please share this video with them. 
However, next first Monday of the month, we will not be there. It's October 2021, and then it's the month of the EAO Digital Days. If you joined us later and you haven't heard this, it's really coming up. Registration is now open, and that registration is fully for free, just like subscribing to the EAO channel here on YouTube. So make sure you hit the website digitaldays.eao.org, sign up for free, and block the dates October 12th to 14th for our uh, live evenings, very interactive, very entertaining, very educating to be there with us and very interactive. However, when you sign up, you get full access to the platform between October 8th and November 8th as well. So if you haven't done so, do that right away, right now. Rudolf Fuhrhauser, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us here tonight. It was a pleasure, really a pleasure. And, uh, a big compliment to all our audience members for checking in, for tuning in, and for sending your questions. Looking forward to see you back next month at the EO Digital Days or one of our future EO Just Asks Live.